Patrice Cullors, a Los Angeles community organizer whose older brother had been brutalized, brutalized during imprisonment in Los Angeles County jails, and friend of Alicia, read her post and replied with the first instance of hashtag Black Lives Matter. As the hashtag became popular on Facebook and Twitter, Alicia, Patrice, and fellow activist Opal Tometi built a network of community organizers and racial justice activists using the name Black Lives Matter. The phrase and the hashtag were then quickly adopted by grassroots activists and protests all across the country, particularly after the subsequent killings of Michael Brown, Eric Garner, and a number of other African Americans at the hands of police officers or would-be vigilantes. Black Lives Matter is an ideological and political intervention in a world where black lives are systematically and intentionally targeted for demise. It is an affirmation of black folks' humanity, their contributions to this society, and their resilience in the face of deadly oppression. Black Lives Matter has established itself as a worldwide movement, particularly after the murder of George Floyd in 2020. Most recently, Black Lives Matter has spearheaded demonstrations worldwide protesting police brutality and systematic racism that overwhelmingly affects the black community. Alicia says she does not think of the Black Lives Matter movement as her creation. She feels her work is only a continuation of the resistance led by black people in America. Today, she heads up the policy, politics and policy organization Black Futures Lab, which she founded, and is an active participant in several Bay Area social movement groups. Her first book, The Purpose of Power, How We Come Together When We Fall Apart, was published in 2020. Alicia said, we want to see a world where Black Lives Matter in order for us to get to a world where all of our humanity is respected. Opal, who formed BLM social media platforms and strategy, was most recently the executive director of the Black Alliance for Just Immigration, the first national immigrant rights organization for people of African descent. In 2020, Opal created Diaspora Rising, a center focused on cultivating a global black community. She has also been a part of the Global Forum on Migration and Commission on the Status of Women. Opal says, we also believe that we cannot truly become free when marginalized black communities are kept at the margins and are forgotten. We don't believe that there can be a trickle down social justice. We believe that people on the margins must be brought center. Patrice credits social media being instrumental in revealing violence against African Americans. In 2021, she left her role as executive director of Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation to focus on her second book and a multi-year TV deal with Warner Brothers that will see her develop and produce original programming across all platforms, including broadcast, cable, and streaming, aimed at amplifying Black Lives Matter, Black storytelling, and Black perspectives. She teaches at Otis College of Art and Design in the Public Practice Program and at Prescott College in the Master's Arts in Social Justice and Community Organizing Program. She says, we will not stop fighting until every single black life is provided the type of love and support we so desperately deserve. Each of these women have founded and participated in numerous organizations, written books and articles, given speeches, and have received recognition and awards for their work toward black liberation, including being named to Time Magazine's 100 Women of the Year in 2013 and Most Influential People in 2020, The Route 100, recognizing from Fortune, Essen, Essence, and many other magazines, the British Broadcasting Corporation, and a nomination for the Nobel Peace Prize in 2021, just to name a few. Today we Today, we celebrate the work and the life of Pat Patrice Cullors, Alicia Garza, and Opal Tomeni. Amen. Amen. Grace and peace in the name of the Christ Child. Good morning, Danville Congregational Church. Happy Black History Month. And in case you hadn't noticed by the energy in the room, happy Youth Sunday. I wonder if we could take a moment and appreciate our young people who have welcomed us into worship today. Thank you. 
We are an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ, and we aspire to be people of extravagant welcome. No matter who you are or who you love, how you identify or express your gender, whether you and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here, no matter what. Amen. My name is Paloma Jackson Trimble, and I'm a member of the youth group here at UCC. And over here are a lot of people in our youth group. Wave, everybody. <laughs> And I am Todd Atkins Whitley, associate pastor here at Danville Church. Our senior minister, the Reverend Eric Sherlock, is away on sabbatical for two more days. <laughs> we are so glad that you have joined us here this morning. Whether you are joining us from Zoom, good morning, gathered here in the sanctuary, or are watching us on YouTube on your lunch break. So I wonder how many people are on Zoom, Paloma. Uh, Amy, how many folks do you 38. think? 38 folks joining us on Zoom. Welcome. So glad that y'all are here with us this morning. If you are new to our community, you are our honored guests. If you're w visiting with us online, we invite you to introduce yourself in the chat and to share whatever information you would like us to have about you. Those of you visiting in person, we'll hope you'll stick around after worship so we have an opportunity to greet you. For our young friends in the room, we have some activity bags in the back and a pretty resource, well-resourced children's library. So if you'd like to check that out, be sure and do that. And you're welcome to take the activity bags home with you. Later in this service, we will lift up our joys and concerns during our time of prayer. For those of you on Zoom, please type your prayer request in the chat at any point during the service and our tech minister will read your prayers out loud. Those of you in the sanctuary are invited to write your joy or concern on a prayer card loca located in the pew and an usher will come by later in the service to collect those requests. As always, you are welcome to reach out to Pastor Eric or Pastor Todd anytime with individual prayer concerns. And following worship, we will do two things. You're invited, uh, if you're here in person, you're invited out to uh, Koinonia Hall in the room behind us uh, for a time of coffee, conversation, and community. And those of you who are gathered on Zoom, we'll open up a breakout room so that y'all are well, uh, able to fellowship with one another as well. Finally, to keep our community safe, we ask if you're worship, worshiping with us in person that you always wear a mask properly inside the building. And for a complete list of our in-person guidelines, please refer to your bulletin. Now for some announcements. <laughs> Just a few. <laughs> All right, so this is the last Sunday of our Epiphany series, which has been rooted in a woman's lectionary for the whole church by the Reverend Dr. Will Gaffney. Um, you can find out more about this series and this lectionary and all of the voices that have been featured in our worship service today in your bulletin and on our website. And for those of you who are joining us from home, uh, visit our website to download the bulletin if you'd like to follow along with us using that PDF. Lent begins next week with our traditional Ask Ash Wednesday services at 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary and streamed on Zoom using the same link you use for worship. You can find more information in your bulletin. If you will be unable to be here in person, you can pick up a small bag of ashes from Pastor T today or from the small or from the church office Tuesday or Wednesday. And in lieu of uh, Lenten practice bags, which we distributed last year we're going to pull from our abundance and you'll see more about that in our theme this year uh, by participating in a set of weekly and daily spiritual practices using resources that we already have and we'll be publishing that list of practices on our website and each week in our bulletin and as this season is about to change we'll be changing the banner today any, any of our young friends are invited to stay after and help us change it. And uh, did I mention that Pastor Eric's coming back this week? <laughs> so if you would like to be a part of welcoming him, welcoming him back in person, you are invited to a small little reception in the church office uh, this Tuesday between noon and 1 p.m. If you would like to come and be a part of 
welcoming him back to the community. Please stop by. Those are all of our announcements for today. Let us together pray together. Those of you gathered here and those of you joining us on Zoom, let us take a deep breath in. Breathing in the unconditional love of our God and breathing out God's peace. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. in mind or spirit, please join me in the call to worship. Redeeming God, we worship you. You are God. We are your people. The ever-living God is a great God. Holy One, we will listen for your voice. Mother of all, we are here, we are listening. Our Hebrew lesson today comes to us this morning from selections from Psalm 95, verses 1 through 7, as translated by, by Dr. Will Gaffney. Hear these words. Come, let us sing joyfully to the rock who birthed us. Let us shout to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into her presence with thanksgiving. With songs of praise, let us shout to her. For the ever-living God is a great God and a great majesty above all gods. For in her hand are the depth of the earth, the heights of the mountain are hers also. For hers is the sea, for she made it, and the dry land which her hands have crafted. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the ageless God, our maker. For she is our God, and we are the people of her pasture, and the sheep of her herd. If only you would listen to her voice today. May God bless these hearings of, the, of these ancient words. Amen. Peace be with you. Let us greet one another and, with waves and smiles and pass the peace of Christ using the chat feature.
At this time, uh, we invite all the children to come forward. Okay, I'm going to be reading the book Mother God by Teresa Kim Pesunovsky and illustrated by Koa Lee. You know God the Father, but God is your mother too. You are made in her image. She is making all things new. Waiting for new life to begin, God is a mother in labor. She takes deep breaths until the birth, rejoicing with friend and neighbor. Throughout the day and night, God wakes to nurse the infant at her side. She snuggles her baby gently until he closes his eyes sleep until he closes his sleepy eyes. When baby tumbles on the floor, God pulls off each tiny sock. She holds her arms out wide and the baby learns to walk. God is Sophia Wisdom, teaching what is true and right. Wisdom works, creates, orders, and plays. She calls us with joy and delight. Over the waters of creation, God is the spirit who hovers. She forms the earth into a bed and the wide sky its covers. God is a mother hen who gathers chicks under her wings. She plays hide and seek in soft grass behind trees and quiet springs. She protects her cubs from danger. God, the great mother bear, as fierce as she is tender, she guards them in her care. God is a lurking leopard, secretive, skilled, and strong. Teaching her young to swim and climb, she roars and they tag along. With a huge supply of flour, God kneads and bakes good bread. He feeds her entire neighborhood. They feast and all are fed. God is a skillful seamstress who stitches and sews thread together. He makes clothes for rain, snow, and sun caring for you in all kinds of weather. Granny Baba Palmenoi, God is a woman with gray hair. She passes down stories of old, rocking, she passes down stories of old, rocking softly in a chair. She is the God who sees you. God weeps, mourns, and cries. He comforts you through the longest night, keeping watch until sunrise. She quiets us with her songs, singing lullabies in the night. God, our nurturing mother, wraps us in holy moonlight. God is your loving mother, 
You are made in her image too. God calls you beloved. She is making all things new. The end. <laughs> Good job. Isn't that a beautiful book, Church? Just came out last week. Imagine the timing. So I wonder what was your favorite image of God? Which one did you hear that you liked the most? I wonder if we could think about that and imagine God this way, too. I wonder, Sabrina, do you think God likes to hear us sing? Um, I definitely, yes. Okay, all right. Hmm, I wonder what song we could sing together this morning. Hmm. Any guesses? Anybody want to pick a fruit? Kiera, you want to pick a fruit? Okay, come on up, if you want. Hmm, okay, Sabrina, you're up. Hmm, is the fruit of the Spirit an apple? No. No. Are you sure? Is the fruit of the Spirit an apple? No. No, the fruit of the Spirit's not an apple. The fruit of the Spirit's not an apple. If you want to be an apple, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit because the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Again. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Good job. Thanks, Kira. Anybody else want to pick one more? Oliver, I knew you wanted to. Go ahead. Get a good one. Yeah. Dig in there. See what all's in there. I don't even know what that is. I think it's a mango. It's a mango. Mango. Okay. All right. Is the fruit of the spirit a mango? No. no Is the, the fruit of the spirit a mango? No. No, no the, the fruit, fruit of the spirit's not a mango. The fruit of the spirit's not a mango. If you want to be a mango, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit, because the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Good job, everybody. <sighs> Woo! You want to do that for Okay. Please pray with me. Mother God, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for... Wait. <laughs> thank you for leading us in so many ways, no matter what. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good job, everybody. All right. Wasn't that fun? Our gospel lesson comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 7, verses 24 through 35, as translated by Dr. Will Gaffney. Hear these words. When John's messengers have gone, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What, where, what did you go all into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? A person dressed in luxurious robes? Look, those whose clothing is lavish and who live in self-indulgence are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. I tell you, among those born of women, no one is greater than John. Yet the least of the reign of God is greater than he. 
Now all the people who heard this, including the tax collectors, profess the righteousness of God, being baptized with the baptism of John. But by refusing to be baptized by him, the Pharisees and legal school scholars rejected God's counsel for themselves. To what then will I compare the people of this generation and what they are like? They are like children in a marketplace, sitting and calling to another. They played the flute for all of you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not come weep. For John the baptizer has come eating no bread and drinking no wine, and you all say, he's a demon. The son of woman has come eating and drinking, and all you say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by all her children. May God illuminate in hearing of these ancient words. Amen. Today's modern lesson comes from us from Patrice Cullors and is excerpted from the book she co-wrote, titled, When They Call You a Terrorist, Young Adult Edition a story of Black Lives Matter and the power to change the world. Hear these words. I'm the 13th generation progeny of people who survived the hulls of slave ships, survived the chains, the whips, the months of lying in their own excrement, the humans being legislated as not human beings, who watched their names, their languages, their goddesses and gods, the arc of their dances and beats of their songs, the majestic the majesty of their dreams, their very families snatched up and stolen, disassembled and discarded, and despite this, built language, and honored God, and created movement, and upheld love. What could they be but stardust, these people who refused to die, who refused to accept the idea that their lives did not matter, that their children's lives did not matter? May God illuminate our understanding of these modern words. Amen. I will start off by saying a quote from Martin Luther King Jr. Everybody can be great because anybody can serve. You do not need to have a college degree to serve. You do not need to have to make your subject and verb agree to serve. You only need a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love. This quote by Martin Luther King Jr. is uh, important because it talks about the action that can be taken on Martin Luther King Day. Many of us think of Martin Luther King Day as a, as a day off from all the daily activities um, of our daily lives, but I believe it to be so much more. Um, why shouldn't Martin Luther King Day be a day on? Um, a, a day to serve, a day to do better, a day to take action. Um, well, that's at least what this church did last Martin Luther King Day. We brought together, us as a church, we brought together a group of people, uh, a mob per se, to come together to make this day um, to help people in need. On this day, we built many different things such as cabinets and tables for those who could not afford or do it themselves. Um, I believe this is important because not only is serving the community um, be a, a, is a benefit, but it is also a necessity. We all need something uh, that we cannot 
do just uh, with ourselves. Uh, so being a part of helping someone, um, some, hel helping someone else's need uh, felt really good. Um, this brings me back to the quote, uh, you only need a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love. This church, by holding this day, taking this action on Martin Luther King Day, and uh, moving forward generates souls of love by serving the community. Thank you. As I'm reflecting on the past two months of youth group with themes of black history, the thing that stands out to me the most is how my own feelings toward the topic of racial injustice have changed. Before following this theme in youth group lessons, I felt guilty about my lack of knowledge and my apathy towards these topics. I had thoughts like, racial inequality is something that affects the entire country, millions of people. It's something that I should be passionate about solving. Social media, the news, social justice activists, and my peers often shame people for not taking action against injustice, for not wanting to scream, shout, and make a fuss about recent events and injustices in the news. While it is important to see the injustice, to acknowledge it, and the need for change, the constant pressure to do something makes it hard to be a learner, to listen to Black voices, historical accounts, and real experiences in a calm, observant way. I've realized that I shouldn't feel guilty about being someone who isn't yet passionate about tackling racial issues because I've learned that passion comes after learning the necessary facts that are needed to be an effective part of the solution. To act passionate about solving issues I don't yet have background knowledge on wouldn't just be unwise, it would be performative. Learning about black history and racial issues with Pastor T and my friends and youth group has helped me to realize that a mild, welcoming environment is much easier to learn in than an environment in which I'm being reprimanded for not having the background knowledge already, which is often the case on social media or even in school. If more people had an environment where they are allowed to come in with little to no knowledge of black history and allowed to ask questions as simple as they may be, then a lot more progress might be possible. More citizens would have the tools they need to challenge leaders and institutions to do better instead of sitting on their phone, overwhelmed by Instagram feeds and hashtags, wondering what their role is in the issue. Social media can be an effective tool in rallying people for change, but it is also a place where very few rules exist, where people speak over one another, throwing around buzzwords and vir virtue signaling instead of actually trying to help people learn. So a different environment is necessary to educate people on social justice. As members of DCC, we are very lucky to have leaders that provide us with events, lessons, literature, and outings that serve to educate us about racial justice and black history, but not everyone has this. As members of a community with these opportunities, we might consider being people who can step into conversations amidst chaos and tell people, it's okay that you didn't know this, I can teach you, we can learn together, and then we can go out and make change. Having compassion for people who don't yet understand social justice issues is the first step to getting them to join the cause. We watched the movie Just Mercy during youth group movie night, where the theme of compassion stood out to me the most. A black Harvard lawyer, Brian Stevenson, goes into the Deep South on a mission to free inmates on death row who have been falsely accused. He sets an example of compassion not just with his clients, the inmates, but with the very people working against him, the county sheriff and the man who falsely accuses his defendant. Through his calm demeanor and compassion, he achieves an unlikely outcome and frees his client and challenges the social norms of the town. He never used shame or fear as a means of achieving his goal, and he set an example for how we should conduct ourselves as we try to initiate change in the world around us. As someone who came into DCC knowing very little about racial inequality issues, 
I know the compassion with which our leaders teach uncomfortable topics is what inspires me to keep learning and preparing myself to be part of the solution. Learning about black history and women's history with my fellow youth group members over the past two months has inspired me to use what I've learned to be patient and kind with others and to include everyone in important conversations. Hi, everyone. Uh, before I begin, I just want to thank Zach and Piper for their uh, great insights. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Kimmy, and I've been coming to DCC since I was like five years old. Um, I've been shaped by this church, and I grew a passion for social justice. Now I'm 18, and I'm getting ready to start my first year in college as a peace and justice major, so I thought it was fitting to talk about my experience in the church as well as the San Ramon Danville area. As one of the only people of color in DCC, I uh, think I have a unique perspective on this issue. Um, personally, I've experienced the most racism at school, from being belittled by a substitute teacher for being from China, and he didn't know the full story, or like hearing kids taunt each other with every slur you can imagine, like saying chink casually in the hallways, N-word, F-A-G, pussy, you know, only one can wonder where people got the idea it was okay to use that language so regularly. But we know where it comes from. It starts with casual conversations at the home when parents use and allow this kind of language and these kinds of references or the internet telling young kids that it's cool to, to say this stuff. While there are more obvious forms of, while these are more obvious forms of discrimination, probably one of the worst is that of silence. Silence looks like agreement when there should be none. It looks like not wanting to speak up when you should, and it also looks like not voting when you have the power to, or voting in ignorance. Silence is choosing to be comfortable rather than changing for the sake of others. You have to step outside of your comfort to see the discomfort in others, and then be willing to do something about it. Learning to be unsilent is easier said than done. It requires you to prioritize others' dignity above your own comfort. Sometimes I've been able to speak up, like when I'm with my friends, it's much easier. But recently I was in a group, and one of our group leaders said, Saeed sounds like a terrorist name. No one in the group said anything. We all just looked at each other with like that, oh, she didn't just say that type of look. But no one said anything. Um, so I get the paralysis that happens in the face of injustice from personal experience. But I do wonder, what it will take for all of us to speak up, and what it will take to listen if someone says something to you about their experiences. A quote I've remembered since sophomore year English class was, we must always take sides. Neutrality helps the oppressor, um, never the victim. Silence encourages the tormentor, not the tormented. That's from Elie Wiesel, survivor of the Holocaust and author of Night. What he's saying here is when you don't speak up, you're saying to the oppressor and the oppressed, continue your abuse, and look what happened. Hitler rose to power on the backs of the silent. Not even less than 20 years later, Martin Luther King Jr. wrote about the same topic. In his letters from Birmingham jail, he said, I have almost reached the regrettable conclusion that the Negro's great stumbling block in the stride towards freedom is not the white citizen's counselor or the Ku Klux Klanner, but the white moderate who is more devoted to order than to justice, who prefers a negative peace, which is the absence of tension, to a positive peace, which is the presence of justice, who constantly says, I agree with you in the goal you seek, but I can't agree with your method or direct action, who paternalistically feels he can set the timetable for another man's freedom who lives by the myth of time and who constantly advises the Negro to wait until a more convenient season. Earlier in the service, we hear this message again from the, three, from the black woman who founded the Black Lives Matter movement. It matters. In conclusion, it matters to speak up for women. It matters to speak up for people of color. 
it matters to speak up for the LGBTQ plus people. It matters to speak up for poor people and it matters to speak up for the disabled. And it's all of our responsibilities to learn what we can and to get out of our comfort zones. Speak up and speak out. Now that you've heard this, I'm wondering how this might influence the way you move in the world and how you might see yourselves differently. Thank you for listening. Okay, what I'll testing one, two. Ooh, that's live. days watching from the windows all those years outside looking in all that time never even knowing just how blind I've been now I'm here blinking in the starlight now I'm here suddenly I see It's so, so clear, I'm where I'm meant to be. And at last I see the light. And it's like the fog has lifted. And at last I see the light. And it's like the sky is new. And it's warm and real and bright And the world has somehow shifted All at once everything looks different Now that I see you Chasing down a daydream All those years Living in a blur All that time Never truly seeing things The way they were Now she's here Shifting in the starlight Now she's here Suddenly I know If she's here it's crystal clear, I'm where I'm meant to go. And at last I see the light. And it's like the fog has lifted. And at last I see the light. And it's like the sky is new. And it's
Thanks, Gabriel. We're now invited into a time of prayer with and for and alongside one another. Um, I want to kind of go over how we're going to engage in this moment together. We will begin with a moment of silence, and then Paloma will hold a moment of remembrance with us this morning. Then we will share our joys and concerns. So if you've filled one of those out, you could raise that card up and um, we'll invite Oliver to come pick those up. Thanks, Oliver. <laughs> he didn't know he was going to do that. And for those of you gathered on Zoom, if there's a joy or concern uh, that we can hold with you, please type those in the chat. And following that prayer, I will lead a prayer that includes Dr. Martin Luther King's Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s prayer for the church. Thanks, Oliver. And then we are invited to pray together a version of the Lord's Prayer um, written by a retreat of Dominican sisters in harmony with the traditional words of the Lord's Prayer that many of us have learned or prayed. And as always, friends, this, this is an invitation. You are welcome to pray whatever prayer is most comforting or mo most familiar to you. So let's enter into this time of prayer with a moment of silence. This morning, we pause to remember an African American whose life was taken from them. This morning, we remember the life of Tyrell Wilson. Tyrell, an African American man, homeless and living in a Danville parking lot, was shot and killed by a police officer on March 11, 2021, after unsubstantiated substantiated reports that he was throwing rocks from the overpass onto the road below. The same officer had shot and killed Vladimir Arboldia, and a Filipino man suffering from a mental health crisis in Danville in 2018. Tyrell was apparently familiar to Danville police and many in the community knew him as one of the few homeless people and one of few black men in the town of 45,000. He slept on a bus stop bench in a parking lot. As a boy growing up in a middle-class neighborhood in Riverside, Orange County, Tyrell's parents said he had a promising future. He was a good student and excelled at sports, especially track and football, and he made varsity football team as a sophomore. He was handsome and a bit shy, with big brown puppy eyes, said his father, Marvin Wolf Wilson, a retired correctional officer with the Orange County Sheriff's Department. As a child, Tyrell wanted to be a fireman and a preacher because he said he wanted to save lives and save souls. His mother, Diane, a retired postal worker, recalled. But everything changed after a tragic car accident in high school when a semi-truck struck his car, leaving him with serious head injuries and killing Tyrell's friend. After that, Tyrell lost his motivation for school, lost his passion for sports. He lost his joy, his mother said. As an adult, he just could never stay on track, his father said. In the months before his de death, Wilson's family knew he was homeless and had been prescribed medication for depression or paranoia, they think, which he didn't like taking. Several Danville residents who would see Wilson at the bus stop described him in interviews as a friendly, peaceful, and polite person who usually kept to himself and listened to music. Others objected to his presence in the community. Shortly before noon on March 11, 2021, 
Danville Police Dispatch received three calls from motor motorists reporting a person throwing rocks from the Sycamore Valley Road overpass onto Interstate 680. When Officer Andrew Hall arrived at the scene, he found Tyrell standing in the four-way intersection of Sycamore Valley Road and Camino Ramon, clutching a grocery bag from his visit to Lucky's earlier that day. Hall's body-worn camera captured the confrontation that followed, including the officer identifying himself and Tyrell revealing a small folding knife. You can read the gruesome account besides Tyrell's portrait in our gallery. 32 seconds elapsed from the officer confronting Tyrell to the moment he fired, striking the left side of Tyrell's face. Tyrell died from his injuries two days later. Six weeks later, on April 21st, Contra Costa Dix District Attorney Diana Beckton announced charges against Officer Hall for manslaughter and assault with a semi-automatic firearm for the death of Vladimir Arboldia in 2018, two years and five months after Vladimir was killed. No charges have been brought against Officer Hall for Tyrell's death. Tyrell had a passion for music production, especially digital crea creation and mixing. Although a bit shy, Tyrell enjoyed engaging in deep conversations about spirituality and human interaction. This morning, we mourn the loss of Tyrell Wilson and the systems of violence that rob the human community of people like him. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's continue in prayer. Holy God, we are so grateful that you are here and present with us, present in this space, present with us through the technology of Zoom, connecting us to each other and to people around the world who call on your name. God, we are so glad that you hear us, that you hear the things that we keep in the silences of our hearts, the things that are too difficult for us to put into words. And so God, we lift those things to you, knowing and believing and trusting that you hear us. Holy God, we thank you for this church, for this church that has thrived and persisted and remained connected despite the pandemic and the world around us, that you, God, have brought us back together and that you keep us together with things like Zoom and friends who text us to check on us and people who pray alongside us when we are struggling. God, we thank you so much for a church that loves young people, for a church that makes part of its faith expression, making sure that there are resources to provide for those young people to gather, for those young people to learn, and a church who listens the voice of its young people. We are truly blessed by these, our young people. God, we pray for Pastor Eric as he prepares to return back to us, that his time away has been a time of renewal and rejuvenation. And God, we are so grateful for the work that he will continue along with us in this place. God, we now bring you the concerns of our hearts First, let's consider the prayers from Zoom. Oliver, you want to come read those? Please pray. Oh. Um, please pray for unity from the democratic free world in our support of the Ukrainian people, which should not be a subject of debate, but somehow has become so in our very divided country as we struggle deeply with our autocratic impulses. God in your mercy. Yes. Prayers for the people of Ukraine. May peace and compassion to 
come in the hearts of the leaders of this world. God, in your mercy. From Chris and Stephanie, prayers for the people of Ukraine that the invasion and fighting will end soon so that families that were forced to flee can return home. God, in your mercy and your peace. From Jen O'Neill, prayers of thanksgiving for a beautiful youth-led service. Thank you, Pastor Todd and Hugh, for our community, for supporting our youth and giving them a voice. God, in your great joy, hear our prayer. From Mary Marie, we pray for the brave souls in Russia who are speaking out mm. to protest their country's invasion of Ukraine. God, in your mercy and peace, hear our prayer. Um, from Mary Marie, youth, all of you, we are enormously proud of you, and it's so great to have you leading worship today. God, in your love and joy, hear our prayer. Um, from James Dobson, wonderful job to the youth of DCC, and from Dave and Nancy, uh, great, great job, speakers. God, in your joy and love, hear our prayer. We have a prayer request from the Ferber Dobson family, prayers of joy for our friend Vic. The radiation worked and the cancer is gone. Praise God. God in your mercy and healing. Our prayer. Steve Bridgman requests prayers for my 99-year-old father who is dealing with advanced renal failure. May he live with dignity and minimal pain for whatever time he has left. God, in your healing and mercy, hear our prayer. And a prayer from Richard Stein. Prayers for my wife, Diane, who is really struggling with walking. She is having a series of medical tests. May a solution which will give her relief come to her soon. Prayers for healing. God, in your mercy and healing. Prayer. Gracious and loving God, watch over the people of Ukraine. Sustain their leaders, protect her people, frustrate the efforts of her oppressors. Give the leaders and people of our countries, courage and a capacity for sacrifice in their defense and strengthen the world in its resolve to name and resist tyranny wherever it may be found. O God of many genders who said, let us create humankind in our image. We ask your protection on queer people around the world. In particular, God, we pray for transgender children and their families in Texas who already live in fear, who now face a hateful and terrorizing edict from the leadership in that state. God, we pray for the defeat of any effort that seeks to demean, to marginalize, or oppress any of your beautiful children, especially trans children who reflect your multivalent image and protect and uphold their families as they accompany those children, as they seek to live into their truth. And may your church, may your church rise up in swift and clear action to protect these children in your name. God, as we have been illuminated by the people and stories of black history, the injustices, the achievements, the resilience of African-American people, help us, O oh God, to never forget our history and instill in us the willingness to share our history with our youth and others throughout the year. God, we pray for open hearts and minds and spirits willing to learn and be transformed by you. And God, now we conclude this prayer with two prayers by siblings. First, by our sibling, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, who prayed, we thank you for the church. We thank you for your church founded upon your word that was with you in the beginning, that challenges us to do more than sing and pray, but go out and work as though the very answer to our prayers depended on us and not upon you. Help us to realize that humanity was created to shine like the stars and live on through all eternity. Keep us, we pray, in perfect peace. 
Help us to walk together, pray together, sing together, and live together until that day when all God's children of all nations, creeds, and ethnicities, all God's children will rejoice in one common band of humanity in the reign of our Lord and of our God, we pray. And now we pray together in harmony the prayer of another sibling of ours, our sibling Jesus, who taught us to pray. One of you read, Our Mother. You're invited to pray either or both parts. Our Father. Our Mother. Who art in heaven. Who are in all the earth. Hallowed be thy name. Holy is your truth. Thy kingdom come. May your wisdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your circle be one uniting in heaven and earth. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our nurturing spirit. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Heal through us as you have our evil. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lead us into fullness of life and liberate all that is good. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. For the wisdom, the power, and the presence, and the goodness are yours. And all the people said, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Sometimes I take for granted the many blessings in my life. I have a family who provides, nurtures, and supports me, and though they can be annoying, a couple of pretty cool siblings too. <laughs> I have plenty of food, a warm place to sleep, and access to a great education. And I belong to a church family that has always loved me and cared for me, my whole self, through spiritual nurture, owl classes, lots of pizza, and fellowship with other youths. Though life can be tough sometimes, I think it is important to count my blessings, to name them one by one as the song goes. So I invite us all to pause for a moment and think about our blessings. What are your blessings? I invite you to say them out loud right now or type them in the Zoom chat. Any others? Yes, and if we think about it, we really are blessed, aren't we? It is from this place that we are invited to bless others, to give of our time, to treasure our talent, so that others may see the light that so brightly shines from within us, so that others might feel the light of a God who loves us very much. Today, the youth group would like to invite you to bless the work of the Interfaith Movement for Human Integrity, who came and spoke to our youth group last year, about four teenage girls whose families have experienced the horror of ICE detention and the threat of deportation. And this is a book of like stories and um, illustrations and we'll have it at coffee hour if anyone wants to look at that. Um, this organization is working to remind us all that all people are sacred across bars and borders and works to invite us as an expression of our faith into solidarity to help create the beloved community a world that treats everyone as sacred. For those of you who have already made a gift by check or automated giving, we are grateful. If you'd like to make a gift today, please give using our website. The link will be in the chat. Um, or you can leave a gift in the offering plate that Michael and Mateo will be holding on your way out. Michael and Mateo, could you wave to everyone? Thank you. <laughs>
Mother of all, thank you for the many blessings in our lives. Even when we don't always remember to tell you, we are grateful. Thank you for this church and its generous heart. For the people who give of their time, those who are able to give of their treasure, those who give of their talents. Holy God, we humbly pray that you accept these gifts and that you bless them beyond whatever we can imagine, so that your light shines through them, blessing as we give, blessing those who receive. And gratefully we pray. And all the people said, Amen. Beloveds of God, 
How about that? We have seen the light. We have heard the light. And if you are grateful for what you have seen and what you have heard, could we express some appreciation to our young people? And so we, as we prepare to sing our benediction together, receive this blessing. Wherever you go into this world today, may you find yourself in service to one another. And as you go through your life, may you take the time to learn and make the commitment to, to someone else to learn along with you. And as you have opportunity, may you speak out. May you speak out the light and the love that is within you. Or we could say, let it shine. This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine, let it shine Let it shine Fill you with all joy and peace that by trusting in God you may overflow with hope that you may shine brightly into a world in need of that hope. Beloveds of God, go in peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hmm? The computer's at 1%. Great. <laughs> <laughs>